welcome back to the Haikian channel. So today I will be teaching you about capacity, which is exercise 11i today. Okay, so today's learning intention is to understand what capacity is and how to convert between common units for capacity, which we will touch on. And today's success criteria is to understand that capacity is the volume of fluid or gas that an object can hold. You also need to be able to perhaps convert between common units of capacity and if you can meet all three success criteria and know the common units of capacity and be able to spell them. So that's milliliters, liters, kiloliters and megaliters. And before I start, I'm just going to change my pen colour. So today's introduction, capacity is the volume of a fluid or gas that an object can hold. So if I was to draw like a little cup. All right, it's the fluid, so fluid could be like liquid, okay, so we could put like, for example, water or gas, which you should have learned in term one, you know, if I was to put in a container, like gas particles, okay. All right, so common metric units are litre with a capital L, that's the um, symbol that you would use to denote them. So I've just put all the symbols in brackets, milliliter, little m with capital M. Kiloliter, little l with capital L. Megaliter, capital M and L. And here's the flow chart, which looks very similar to the ones we have been using for perimeter, area and volume. The difference between them is, apart from the measurements that you see, is that they actually don't decrease um, or increase in multiplication and division. They're all the same. So to get from megaliter to kiloliter, you just have to multiply a thousand. To get from kiloliter to litre, you still multiply by a thousand. Whereas in previous flow charts, you know, we've had um, a substantial decrease. So if I was to do the um, just the common perimeter measurements, see how it's times a thousand, times a hundred, and then times ten. So they're different. And that's what you need to wrap your head around, the fact that these are different. So today we're going to quickly just touch on volume and capacity and the relationship they have. So just real quick to know for, you know, your work or your tests, extra conversions to know. One centimetre cubed equals one milliliter. One metre cubed is the same as writing a thousand litres or one kiloliter. So here I've just got an image, all right, so we had two cartons of milk and we said this was one litre. We know that one litre equals a thousand millilitres and the ratio between millilitre to centimetre is a one-to-one -one ratio. Okay, so I've just written, I've uh, just attached the flowchart from the previous slide, just so for reference, that Sometimes the questions may throw you off by using two different forms of measurement. Like if I wrote one uh, litre and 1,000 centimetres cubed here, you might be thrown off a little because this is a volume unit of measurement and this one here is a capacity unit of measurement. All right. So today we're going to be doing a few worked examples. So the first one we're going to do is conversion of units. So... It's just using the flow chart that I've attached once again. So blue I've made as a question, black and blue. Yellow you don't need to write in your working out, but white you need to work out. Okay, so you need to make sure you show all your working out. So I've just shown you here for 1A, you know, the question says 7,200 millilitres converting to litres. So millilitres to litres, you need to divide 1,000. So you get the question, 7,200 divided by 1,000, and that will give you 7.2 litres. And make sure you don't forget your unit of measurement, because it could be, you know, seven, is it 7.2 centimetres? Is it 7.2 um, metres? We don't know until you show your unit of measurement. And yes, you will lose a mark if you don't write it down. So just a real quick recap for you in terms of decimals, just so you know, remembering that the decimal is always after the whole number and how many zeros there are is how many times you move. Now, if it's division, you're moving to the left. So this is left three times for three zeros. So it'd be one, two, three. 
and that's how we know the decimal point fits at 7.2 okay so here we've got four kiloliters all right so just showing you kiloliters all right so four kiloliters to milliliters you can times a thousand twice you know on your calculator or what you could do is if you look kiloliters to milliliters all right there's a bit of a gap all right it's not just next door so you have to times a thousand twice so you could either literally just do four times a thousand okay which equals four thousand and then do four thousand times a thousand again to get your answer which is four million okay but what we can do is we can add all these zeros together. So how many zeros are there? There's three here and there's three here. So there's six zeros. So you can just write one with six zeros to give you the total amount of number. You just have to multiply once. So rather than doing, you know, two steps over here, I could just do the one step, which is over here. And that's given me four million milliliters. All right. Now, the next example we're going to do is finding the capacity of the container in litres. So I would strongly suggest that you write your formula every single time. So volume equals length times width times height. Okay, now the really important thing in a question is to know what units you want your answer to be because sometimes in the question you know they've given me here centimeters but the question's asking for liters so i know that even though i calculate it in centimeters i still at the end of the day have to convert it back to liters all right so volume equals length times width times height so i've just written it out expanded with multiplication signs just so you know how it looks expanded and I've written it up here as well um, just in case you've forgotten from the previous video so volume equals 30 so we've got 30 here all right times 10 over here now where did I get the other 10 so we want to find out what this one is all right what this length is and we can see that by the two lines that they're actually denoted to be the same so if you remember um, in a triangle Okay, if there's a triangle with, you know, one line here and it says three centimeters, the unknown side here is the same as three because they're denoted as using the same um, line. All right, so two lines here, 10 centimeters, two lines here must be 10 centimeters. And that's where I got the extra 10. All right, so it's length times width times height. So volume equals 3,000 centimetres cubed. We use cube for volume. All right, just a bit of a recap. Now I have to convert it into litres, which is our capacity measurement. So 3,000 centimetres cubed equals 3,000 millilitres because there is a one-to-one -one ratio between centimetres cubed and millilitres. So... 3,000 millilitres divided by 1,000 to get to litres, okay? So I don't need to write that. I could just say that is to give it to me into litres, all right? So 3,000 millilitres divided by 1,000 would give me 3 litres. Now, if the question was a worded problem and it was explaining to you that maybe, you know, Harry had a milk carton and, you know, it was 30 centimetres in height and 10 centimetres in width, you know, find the volume, um, so we need to make sure that we understand that a worded problem requires a worded answer. And usually worded problems have many marks. So you just need to make sure to obtain the maximal amount of marks that you are writing a worded answer for a worded problem. Okay, and with that, that is all for today for capacity. It was a real quick one. Um, and if you have any questions, feel free to ask your teacher and we'll see you for the next video. Thank you.